How many of you all hate making multiple trips to carry in all your groceries? Anybody else try to do it all in one go? Or is that just me? But sometimes, no matter how hard I try on these big trips, I just don't have the capacity to carry it all myself. Sometimes I need more space in my arms. Sometimes I need stronger bags or just some bigger muscles. But all of those things are factors that can limit my ability to accomplish my goal, which is, of course, one trip. And you may be thinking, Miss Urban, what does this have to do with ecology? And the answer is everything. Let's go on a field trip and find out how. Hi, welcome to the Potomac River. Before we get too far into the story, I want you to take special note of key vocabulary, the meanings of prefixes and suffixes, and if your first language is Spanish, please take note of the words that are almost the same in Spanish and English that will appear on the screen. And make sure you stick around for the surprising connection to hippo poo. Yeah, you heard that right, hippo poop. <laughs> we'll get there. But for now, how many fish do you think could live in this area of the Potomac River that you can see? A hundred? A thousand? 10,000? Are there any factors that you can think of that would limit how large the population could grow? In biology, we study life. And ecology is a special field that focuses on how living and non-living things interact with each other. When I asked you how many fish could live in that area of the river, I was asking you about the river's carrying capacity. Much like my own physical capacity to carry in my groceries, the carrying capacity of the river is talking about how many fish the river could support with the resources it has available. What are resources? Well, they're the things that the fish need to survive or whatever organism you're studying. And that might be an energy source for fish that would be their food, space, or oxygen, just to name a few. The factors that limit a population's ability to grow unchecked are conveniently called limiting factors. We don't live on a planet with limitless resources, so every species, including our own, will run into factors that keep them from growing out of control. Limiting factors are typically categorized in one of two ways. Ones that are dependent on the size of the population, which we call density dependent limiting factors, and ones that impact the population no matter how big the population size is from one to a million. Those are called density independent factors. Take a moment to Pause the video and write down all of the factors that you thought could limit the population size of fish in the Potomac River. And then think about whether those factors that you listed depend on the size of the population or not. Now that we have a few items written down, I'm gonna to talk to you about the most common limiting factors and then a not so common limiting factor that was just discovered in 2019. The most common example of density dependent limiting factors are predation, parasitism and disease, and competition for limited resources. If there were a bunch of fish in the river behind me, they would have to compete with each other for access to food, mates, space, and there would be more death due to overcrowding and disease. We know that disease is a density dependent limiting factor from experience. That's what social distancing is all about. Being in large groups would also draw more predators to this area. Density independent limiting factors tend to be weather related. Things like drought, fire, hurricane, or mudslide. 
Humans can also be a density-independent limiting factor. We could hunt or fish a species until there are no more. And we have unfortunately successfully done that in the past. Ecology is ultimately all about how things interact within an environment. And sometimes that connection can be very surprising. For that example, we need to head over to the Mara River in East Africa. 65% of this river is in the country of Kenya and it all drains into a huge freshwater lake called Lake Victoria. Lake Victoria is the largest freshwater lake in all of Africa and the second largest in the entire world. Multiple countries within Africa rely on Lake Victoria because it is home to Africa's largest inland fisheries. Since the fish are so important to the lives and livelihoods of the people in that area, it is important to study the limiting factors of that ecosystem. The Kenya portion of the Mara River is home to over 4,000 hippos. They are the third largest land mammal in the world and they are very unique because they spend half of their lives grazing in the fields and the other half relaxing and pooping in the river. Hippos each eat about 55 pounds of grass every day and together they dump about 880 pounds of poop into the Mara River daily. That's the weight of a garbage truck. What are some ways that you can think of that that amount of poop could impact the fish in the Mara River and Lake Victoria? If you stated that you thought the fish could suffocate in the poop, then you're not wrong. When the Mara River is not as deep and the poop is plentiful, sometimes it can be enough to kill a fish. But most of the time, it provides a vital nutrient for the aquatic ecosystem. Silicone is an element found mainly on land. And when the hippos graze all night, they consume lots and lots of this nutrient and act like a conveyor belt of sorts, transferring silicon from land into the water by way of their digestive system. This nutrient is then used by a special kind of algae called diatoms to create a glass shell that is their body. Diatoms are one of the pieces at the base of the food web in Lake Victoria and they make their beautiful bodies out of the silicone provided every day by the hippos. Diatoms not only act as a food source for the other organisms in the lake, but they also supply one fifth of the oxygen on earth and their presence in Lake Victoria helps to prevent pest algae like cyanobacteria from blooming out of control and suffocating the life in the lake. Only in 2019 was this connection between hippo poop and silicon in the lake discovered, and it left reason to be a little concerned. You see, the hippo population is currently considered vulnerable, meaning that every year the population is being killed more than it's able to grow. Over the years, if the population of hippos continues to decrease, that will in turn result in fewer diatoms due to the lack of silica in the water and fewer diatoms could result in more death of the fish and seriously hurt the industry that so many people depend upon for their livelihoods. The beauty and the complexity of the interactions within ecology always leaves me curious for more. And with a healthy curiosity, we can all make a difference. Thank you so much for joining me on my first ever episode of Urban Biology. Um, for more details on anything that I mentioned, please check out the description below where I will post links to videos that can give you more and also the scientific journal articles that I studied um, for the details in this video. Bye, see you next time.